Hello again, everyone. I'm Trish Triumph O'Sullivan, and today we are going to talk about reading light and lighting types. This has to do with our very first assignment in this class, so I want you to pay attention and make sure that you take notes. Remember, we talked about note taking is muy importante, <clears throat> especially for remembering some of this stuff. So, we're going to talk about Lighting and lighting types. Okay. So there's three types of light. We'll talk about one at a time. So number one is direct. Direct light Um, means exactly what it sounds like. Light is hitting the subject, whatever that subject may be, directly. So if we had the sun, the sun is a form of direct light. Okay. Um, it uh, comes down and it hits, let's say we'll make a ball. Sun is gonna whoop. Actually, it's kind of too high for them <laughs> for that. Okay, we'll put the ball right here. All right. So the sun light hits the ball, and usually you'll see like a, when direct light, you'll see what we call a specular highlight, which is that little bright spot where it's reflecting at that um, exactly directly from the the sunlight. Um, sometimes you can get kind of blinded by a specular highlight if you're, say, looking at a car and it's reflecting brightly at you. That's your specular highlight. Um, so when you have direct light hitting an object, you have what we call um, dark shadows. And dark shadows, I don't mean the, uh, the old TV show. Of course, I don't think anyone in my classes anymore is old enough to remember dark shadows. But that used to be a really popular TV show um, back when I was a kid. And um, it had vampires and werewolves and stuff. It was actually a, uh, a soap opera, a soap opera about vampires and werewolves and witches and that kind of thing. Um, so direct light uh, has particular properties. And one of the properties is that it has a distinct shadow. Now I'm not gonna color this in super, super dark, um, but it basically means that it has, that the, whatever object that you are looking at in direct light is gonna have a distinct shadow and a specular highlight, okay? So the properties of direct light um, are that you get a very good three-dimensional quality. Right? It's very 3D because you've got that, that shadow that helps describe the, um, the mass of your subject, whatever the subject that may be, a person, a thing, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, so it has, it's really good for three dimensions. It has distinct shadows. Did I rewrite that one? So distinct shadows. Light comes from one direction. Right? So it doesn't matter if it's light from a sun, light from a strobe or a flash, okay? Um, it's, come, it's one light source coming from one direction. That's what direct light means. It's direct, okay? Um, and we call it, we call this a, a hard turning plane, right? Which means there's usually a distinct line between the light and the shadow, okay? Um, and I think we already said that we have a, what we call a specular highlight. Right, that's what that is, a specular highlight, okay? Um, and the other thing is that you have um, 
high contrast. Right, that's part of the hard turning plane. Right. And then finally, you have loss of detail in the shadow. This is something that I think confuses a lot of people. They don't understand when they take a photograph out in the full sun, why um, this, you, the camera doesn't see into the shadow. Well, that's because the, the camera is a poor, very poor imitation of our regular eye, right? Our eye can see details in a dark shadow, but the camera can't. Our eyes can see like something like one to two thousand um, ratio of shadows in uh, of detail in the shadows where the camera is something like one to eight which is a big limiting factor in the success of our photos and that's why it's important we understand how light works and how our camera sees light so that we're able to take the photograph that is the photograph we want we want to mimic more what we what our eyes see and make our camera do the same. Um, oh, so I, didn't, I don't think I put hard turning plane, but we'll put that down. Hard turning plane. Right, and that just means it's kind of like high contrast. You've got that distinct shadow. So direct light, it means the light is shining directly on your subject. It's direct, direct or directional light, right? One direction. It's coming from, it's uh, really good for 3D, uh, three dimension, showing three dimensions on a flat surface. When I say that, remember, a photograph is a flat surface, right? You can't, it's, it's not three dimensional. So showing three dimensions in a photograph is kind of important if we want to be successful with it. So um, direct light is three dimensional. It casts distinct dark shadows, okay? Dark shadows. It's one direction of light. You will have a specular highlight on your subject, usually. Um, it's high contrast, which can be really cool and dramatic. Um, but there is a loss of detail in the shadow, and you have a hard turning plane. Um, this type of light, and this is very important, so make sure you jot this down. This type of light is best for landscapes. Okay and art, so art photos. Direct light, great for landscapes and doing, say, art photos, because it can be very dramatic and, and have, you can get some really cool effects. Um, so direct light, and in this class, you guys, we're gonna be using mostly natural light, okay? We're not gonna be using, um, we're not gonna be having strobe lights and fancy studio lighting because we just don't have that available to us. What we have available in our own homes and our own lives is pretty much natural light and natural light means sunlight. So when I talk about natural light, I'm talking about sunlight. So the second type of light is called diffused. Okay. So diffused light happens when we have the sun shining, okay, let's put up the sun here. But in between the sun and our subject are a bunch of clouds. And what clouds do is diffuse the light. So if we, like we often do in Salinas, we have in, in the valley, we have a lot of fog. Um, the sun is shining onto the clouds, right? But the clouds, take this light and bounce it all around. So what happens is, is we have light that comes from all directions. So we have our sphere again, right? But light is coming from all directions at once, right? Because of that, because of this cloud cover. And so we have a whole different look happening here, right? So the properties of, of diffused light are different, right? There's no distinct shadows. Right? 
no distinct shadow. It's very two-dimensional, right? It's very two-dimensional. Um, light comes from all directions. Okay. Um, it's very low contrast. Okay. Um, and it's pretty flat looking. That's that, that's that two dimensional, what I would talk there. It's flat looking. All right. But there's one good thing about that. It shows a lot of detail. So it shows um, all the details. There's no shadows. There's no dark shadows to hide details. So it shows detail really well. Okay. So what's it good for? It is good for products, for photographing products. You'll notice like commercial photography, they don't have a lot of dark shadows because they want you to see the whole product. They want you to see all the cool stuff that, they, that they're trying to sell you. Um, so it's good for products, product photographs, and any, and, but it's usually the worst for portraits. And why is that? Well, if you, how many of you guys actually like your driver's license photo? Usually in my classes, I get one or two people, maybe, that raise their hands and say they like their photo. Well, the kind of lighting they use at the DMV when they take your photo is diffused. And it makes our faces look really flat and two-dimensional. And it doesn't, it's not flattering. It's just not a flattering type of light for portraits. So normally we try to avoid diffused light for portraits because it's not as flattering for, for our, our uh, human subjects. Okay, so great for product, not so great for portraits. Okay, so try to avoid that diffused light when you're doing portraits. Now the third type of light is a type of light that I think you can really like get into because it's kind of the perfect light. Right? So it is called, the third type of light, is called fill light. Right? Fill is always, and not fill like P-H-I-L, like Phil, you know, my buddy Phil, right? So we've got fill light is always used, it always has to be with direct light. So every time you see fill light, you know that direct light is with it. And what this kind of light does, um, and this is pretty cool. So we have our sunshine, right? We have our natural light, sun's up in the sky shining, and we have our sphere, right? So we'd have that kind of specular highlight that we get with direct light. Um, and we would have a distinct dark shadow because remember, this is direct light. So we have the casting a shadow. And you guys all know when you're out in the direct sunlight and on, on a bright sunny day that you're gonna cast a, a distinct dark shadow, right? And like I told you, our eyes can see into those shadows, but the camera can't. So when we're having a really dark shadow, um, the camera doesn't see into it like our eyes do, okay? So we have this direct light. Well, what fill light means is that you fill in the shadows with more light. And we can do that by using a reflector, right? So if I have a reflector here, and a reflector can be as simple as a piece of white paper, okay? Very simple, simple as a piece of white paper. And I will show you a little demo with that too that you'll be kind of surprised with because it's kind of a fun demo. Um, but what fill light does, so the sunlight's hitting here, 
but it's also hitting this reflector and reflecting light back into the shadows, right? So what it does is it lightens up the shadows. Let's see if I can get this to kind of... So there's still a shadow, right? There's still a little shadow, but it's a lighter shadow. It's not a dark, dark, deep shadow. So you're basically using reflected light from say a white piece of paper, cardboard. Um, another really good reflector to use are those windshield, um, uh, kind of aluminum looking reflector windshield covers that you put on the inside of your car to keep the, uh, the sun from beating down in there. Those make great reflectors. You can make your own out of crumpled aluminum foil, right? You crumple it up and then open it up and um, kind of put it on a piece of cardboard or, or something to kind of hold it. Um, so fill light basically is filling in the shadow. Um, so what are the properties of fill light? Well, it's the best of both worlds, okay? Um, so I'm gonna put that on here. It has all the great properties of direct light, um, but it also has some of the properties of diffused light because it's filling in those shadows, right? It's opening up those shadows. It looks the most normal to us when in the photograph, right? Because this is how our eyes normally would see it. Our eyes automatically do fill in that because we can see better than our cameras can, okay? It shows the details in the shadow. All right, shows the details in the shadow. Um, and it's, it, it's the most natural looking. And it's the most natural looking light. Um, so sometimes they'll, the, the, this is also known as um, direct diffused light. You sometimes see that in like a book or whatever. Um, for this class, we're gonna use the word fill. So fill light. Um, but it's the best of both worlds. It gives a very good 3D quality. I, but without without loss of detail in the shadow. So it's really the very, very best type of light for portraits. When we do our portraits, I'm gonna tell you to always use fill light. Fill light is the best. Um, now that said, I want to talk to you just for a sec about what we call quality of light. So quality of light refers to the degree of diffusion. And what that means is the best type of time of day, the best light is either gonna be in the very early morning or the very late afternoon like right before sunset kind of time right when the sun is low in the sky either morning time or night time um, and the reason is is that when it's low in the sky the sunlight has to come through a whole lot of atmosphere to reach your subject and it creates some diffusion in the light they often call it sweet light you'll find um, that uh, that Photographers will often say, you know, take your take your portraits or your landscapes when it's the sweet light and it gives kind of a golden or even orangey ready glow to your subject, um, which is fantastic for portraits, landscapes. Um, it's the most it's a really dramatic, great light. Um, and so when you're doing a portrait or any kind of photograph, always try when you're using natural light, always try to 
to take your photograph in the early morning or in the late afternoon when the sun is low in the sky. Never when it's directly above your head. And we'll talk about that a little bit and why. Um, but definitely you want, to take, uh, you want to take advantage of that quality of light that happens in the late afternoon or early morning um, where it's kind of a beautiful yellowish or rosy glow to the, to the sun. And that comes from coming all the way through all that atmosphere. So quality of light refers to the degree of diffusion. And the sunlight coming through all that atmosphere creates a little bit of diffusion so it's not quite so harsh as you would get when we talk about just direct light by itself. Okay, So that's it for uh, light and lighting types. And this is the beginning of the lecture about our very first assignment, reading light and lighting types. See you in class.